our top story, the bottom line of temporary jobs. They're becoming a permanent way of life for so many people out there. In fact, the second largest employer in the country in the country is a temp agency, Kelly Services. It comes right after Walmart on the list, which itself is a heavy user of temporary workers. But what holds more weight in, in our economy, the quality of jobs or the quantity of jobs? Here to weigh in, Peter Marisi, economics professor at the University of Maryland, and Bob Baramapur, the CEO of GigWalk, a company helping businesses hire temporary workers. Bob, I hope I pronounced your last name correctly. You got it exactly right. I love that. Okay, Peter, I'm going to start with you because I find this trend disturbing. Uh, the idea that the second biggest employer in the country is a temporary services agency says to me that there's something deeply wrong with this economy. What does it tell you? Well, certainly we're creating many more temporary jobs than permanent jobs these days. They don't support a family. They don't even support an individual. And it stems from lazy, uh, la la a lousy jobs market. And the new health care law, which encourages employers to take two jobs and turn them into three so they can avoid paying benefits, even without the mandate. Benefit costs are skyrocketing, so avoid the story. Just hire the part-time. Well, you know, no benefits, no 401K. I mean, the list goes on and on. You say right. it doesn't support an individual, let alone a family. Bob, your entire business model is built around, very intelligently so, supplying temporary workers to businesses. Why do you think this is not threatening to our economy, this trend? Well, first of all, I agree with you. Temporary workforces have been growing faster than the economy, in fact, five times faster than the economy. And for many businesses, it's the temporary workforce is becoming permanent. But I think it's a double-edged sword, while at the same time, businesses look to cut costs the category of business, the category of jobs that fall under this temporary uh, rubric is growing. So it's no longer just the cashier at Walmart, but you have temporary lawyers, accountants, technicians, software developers. And what businesses are looking to do is to have flexibility in terms of their cost structure. And that's what we're seeing in some of the numbers that are happening. You know, your flexibility, though, is my pain in the butt, Peter. I, I, you know, I find this so disturbing. Now 12% of workers are temporary workers. Let's get back to my question of quality versus quantity. Which would you choose in this scenario? More permanent work workers, more permanent jobs, or more temporary workers? Peter. Well, we clearly want more permanent jobs than we're creating. That's not to denigrate the importance and usefulness of temporary work for a way of getting started at a new job or in a new area or for filling in from here to there. But most people, long term, have to have a permanent job, uh, even if it's not uh, as an employee, but as a consultant. But there's a commitment for 40, 50 hours a week. There's a lot of that in the legal sector. A lot of big law firms have that. Uh, it's really necessary. You, you simply can't make ends meet long term. You, know, you can always talk about the benefits of temporary work, but it is very disturbing that we're creating so few permanent jobs. One has to ask why. Why? It's a great question. Well, let's ask Bob. Why are we, con uh, uh, you know, developing so many of these temporary workers? Is there something special about this economy? This, you know, post. Uh, great Depression, Great Recession economy that, that means companies are just unwilling to commit to full-time workers, Bob. Uh, th that's exactly right. I think uh, after 2007, 2008, what's happened is businesses are gun shy and they need the resources, they need the talent, but they're unwilling to bake that into their cost structure. So you're seeing this impact of uh, increasing penetration of uh, temporary workforces more than ever. You know, I thought this was interesting, Peter. There's a recent survey of economists that shows that three quarters of them believe that this trend is permanent. Uh, so economists, even people who may regard the creation of temporary jobs as a good thing, because it's a job after all, say this is becoming a permanent thing, something new to our economy. What kinds of long-term impacts will there be from that? Well, for one thing, people won't be able to prepare adequately for their old age. Working on a temporary basis, having multiple part-time jobs, things of that nature, people won't save very much. They don't save enough as it is. They certainly won't build up pension benefits with employees, IRS, KEOs, things of that nature. So we're going to have an elderly population that is wholly unprepared. I predict there's going to be a big push for an expansion of what we know as Social Security, a broader tax oh base, higher rates and so forth simply to provide more some taxes. security for these people. And that's exactly. This is going to end up costing us in more taxes and more government. And I don't know whether that's good for any part of the private sector at all. 
Peter, uh, I'm sorry, Bob, one of the big questions out there, you know, you always hear that temporary work ultimately creates full-time jobs. You move from temporary work into some kind of full-time position. Is there any indication that these jobs being created right now will blossom into a full-time position? So I think there's two interesting statistics. 57% uh, of U.S. employers say they hire temporary as a way to get uh, full-time uh, permanent positions. That's a number four a cited reason. Second is global statistics show that cohorts of, of unemployed who do participate in the temporary workforce uh, over a 12-month period have a lower unemployment rate. So it is definitely a gateway. Of course, you don't want the temporary workforce to overwhelm the growth uh, of, of permanent workforces. And, and that's, as I said, what's happening today is we're seeing temporary workforces grow at five times the rate of uh, of the economy. So well, that's there a is a disproportionate move that's happening. Well, that is a glimmer after all. Peter, I, I have to ask you about something that's a little tangentially related to this, a little different. We've got, and this is, these are numbers that astonished me today, so I just had to ask you about them. We have more Americans on food stamps, more Americans on food stamps than we do in the private sector working. Take a look at these numbers, 101 million people on, you know, food stamps, 97 million working full time. What does that say about our economy? Well, two things are going on there. One is that the economy is creating a lot of low-wage jobs, so people can find some work, but yet not enough hours, and they qualify for food stamp or are not a high enough wage, and they, were, they qualify for food stamp along, with, especially if they have kids. The other is the states have been actively recruiting people to sign up for food stamps, people that might not be inclined because of pride or they have some other way of getting along because it brings money into communities. You know, when the and federal government... for that, too. Absolutely. The federal government sends money to a rural community where there's a lot of potentially eligible people right. in the form of new food stamps, and that promotes the grocery store. So, you know, the grocery industry wants people to sign up, and they do it through uh, local governments and nonprofits that local governments bring in to try to get people organized and into the program. Unbelievable. Well, the beat goes on, and we have to get some better jobs in here. In the meantime, Peter and Bob, thanks for coming on. A great conversation. Thank you. Take care. Thank you.